Hey TCS viewers, it's Chris Goes here from the camera store and today we're going to talk about the X-Pro2. Now I know you're probably thinking, hey you guys already did a video. Yes we did, check it on our channel, 20 minutes long. It was very in-depth, you know, all the first impressions handling and everything, but we didn't get to test the most important part, which is the brand new 24 megapixel sensor. So today we got a quick and dirty video for you. We're going to do that. We're going to compare it against the X-T1 and the Nikon D7200 and see how it stacks up. We want to look at things like ISO, resolution, dynamic range but also video capabilities so Jordan is shooting the entire video today on the X Pro 2. So let's get to it we're gonna take this camera out shoot it test it out and see what we think about the brand new sensor. Now resolution that's really the biggest change from the X-T1 to the X-Pro2 their new 24 megapixel sensor you know Fuji really pushed the 16 megapixel sensor for a long time so this is an exciting one and from what we can see here with the lack of aliasing filter great resolution, very good sharpness. Now we compared it against the D7200, which is a similar sensor, and I'm gonna say with both cameras and both sensors being anti-alias free, we got very similar resolution results. I mean, you can see here, almost identical. So Fuji's not pushing far ahead of any of the other comparable sensors, but they're certainly getting it on par with the latest technology. Now dynamic range, Fuji's have always been excellent for dynamic range, you know, part of their X-Trans sensor technology. Now looking from the X-T1, the older generation to the new sensor, we did see an improvement. It's good, but it's marginal. Took pictures of Jordan just behind us here on the river when the light was much harsher. And again, the X-T1 did a great job. The X-Pro2 steps that up just a little bit more. Now again, looking at that in comparison to the Nikon D7200, Honestly, even though the 7200 uses a somewhat older sensor tech, we're getting very, very similar results. Great dynamic range, good detail in the shadows. That's all gonna hold together pretty much the same way. So the X-T1 is giving us a kick with the X resolution, but the dynamic range isn't gonna blow you away beyond and above what we've expected so far from Fuji. All right, it is time to look at the Fuji X-Pro2's high ISO performance, low light situations. So here we're ramping it up from 1600 ISO, 3200, up to 6400. And what I do like about the X-Pro2 now is we've got a top, a new top, 12,800 ISO. Now looking at the X-T1, this would be a high one push. So we're gonna look at that at 6400 ISO. And what I'm finding, the X-Pro2 steps up the low light performance, the high ISO performance, but just marginally. You're not really getting that big of an improvement, not even half a stop but keep in mind what you are gaining is eight megapixels and that's always counterproductive to ISO performance so all in all the X-Pro2 is giving us a nice benefit here and we decide to look at it with the Nikon D7200 as well 7200 has always had great low light performance Nikon do great processing and get good image quality out of their sensors in low light but we have to talk about a little bit of a, a discrepancy here first you know Fuji are kind of known for doing this they kind of flub the numbers cheat the numbers however you want to look at it their ISOs tend to expose darker than other people's. It's almost like they're not collecting as much light even though they say they are. So, you know, if we look at both cameras at 6400 ISO, we could say that, yeah, the Fuji does perform very well. But tech, check this out. If we get the exposures the same, we push the Fuji to 12,800, we look at it with the D7200 at 6400 ISO, we're getting basically the same exposure at the same aperture and shutter speed. And you can see here, they're very, very comparable. So what I'm gonna say is, if we're looking at the Nikon D7200, we're looking at the X-Pro2 sensor, even with this little flub on the ISOs, I think the image quality at high ISO is basically the same. So, you know, again, it's kind of the same story. Fuji has brought out a new sensor. It stepped up the resolution, but we're not seeing huge gains in other places and nothing that really takes us beyond what we've seen in the competition for a little while now. Now when it comes to autofocus on the X-Pro2, you know, compared to the X-T1, these are the impressions that I get. And, you know, we did test this when we had the pre-production model. It performed pretty well. Now that we've got a full production model, I say it's slightly improved over the X-T1. I notice, uh, you know, very slight, minuscule improvement in a single point focus, you know, point to point, distance to distance. Continuous looks pretty much the same. It does track face as well. We still find that Fujis do tend to sometimes lose the target, especially closer in, enough to kick your focus off and, you know, kill the depth of field and push you out of that range. When Fujis make a mistake, they kick right back into it, so you're never far off, but it's still not up to the standard of some of the competition. I would still say that Panasonic owned the market on single point, 
point, you know, point to point, distance to distance focusing. Their DFD system works amazing. And even though the Sony A6300 that we tested was pre-production, we still feel that that had the best continuous autofocus that we've seen on mirrorless to date. I expect it'll only get better when we take a look at that here shortly. So all in all, I put Fuji in third place now, still very serviceable. You know, it's a testament that they make their older cameras focus as well as their newer cameras with firmware upgrades. But you're not gonna, again, find a huge improvement in focusing speed here. It's me, Jordan, the video guy. So you know what that means? We're gonna be talking about the X-Pro2's video capabilities. And I usually didn't take too long when I talked about the previous Fuji X cams video features because there really weren't many to talk about and the image quality was terrible. So it made my job pretty easy. But with the X-Pro2, they've actually really made an effort to step things up. And when we saw our earlier pre-production camera, I was pretty underwhelmed. It looked like more of the same, but in the production camera here, we're actually getting a much sharper image and it's a lot less prone to the image issues we used to see, artifacting, aliasing, that kind of stuff. Now, you will still get the odd example of moiré, but in general, this is a huge step up in image quality. Now, I have always loved Fuji colors for stills. That's one of the reasons I shoot with these cameras a lot, and I always really missed that in video, but the video quality was so bad on the other cameras, it wasn't really worth it. Now with the X-Pro2, now that we've got actually quite nice video coming out of the camera, I could certainly see using it from time to time, especially because the Provia emulation on this is beautiful, and that's one of my favorite color film types ever. As long as you don't want to do some heavy grading, actually quite useful. Now, I don't think this is gonna become anyone's primary video camera. It's still pretty limiting and there's tons of weird interface quirks. I can't see a waveform or a histogram when I'm shooting. I can't even see my 16 by nine frame until I hit the record button. And the codec's still pretty weak. Again, not something you can grade really aggressively. But I don't wanna undermine the fact that this is a huge step forward for Fuji and I hope they keep moving in this direction because I would love to use a Fuji cam as my primary mirrorless camera for video in the future. All right, guys, so that just about wraps things up. And remember, today's video is just a chance to get you to see the image quality on the final production camera. We already talked about handling in our first impressions before in our other video. You know, overall, with the sensor, I like that we're now getting 24 megapixels. I mean, Fuji's always had a fantastic handling system, great lenses, beautiful color. What we needed was just the resolution to get us up there. So we're now on par with the rest of the competition. That's a great place to be. Now, as far as autofocusing goes, I know I didn't seem too impressed by it. It's not like it's improved much, but keep in mind, the X-Pro2 does add a lot more points. It's a lot more adjustable, and that joystick on the back to move your focusing points around is brilliant. So overall, autofocusing has improved vastly, just not the speed, more the handling. Now overall, you know, the last thing I want to say about Fuji is keep in mind, although, you know, we're getting up to a level that everybody else is at, Fuji still own it for just overall color, look, feel, and contrast out of the box. What I mean by that is their JPEGs are beautiful. There's almost no work you have to do. And we're finding on the X-Pro2, the RAWs are very similar as well. You just get this great looking photo, very little post to be done afterwards that can save you time and enhance your creative vision at the same time. So guys, thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget, check us out on Instagram. Tweet us if you have any comments or questions. Subscribe to us, and we will see you guys very soon, hopefully with some brand new cameras on the market.